Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. So not so long ago I made a video about pre-fight abilities where we basically went over all of the pre-fight abilities that exist in the game, all of the ones that are champion specific. Then we went and took a look at uh, pre-fight abilities that affect groups of champions and pre-fight abilities that affect potentially every champion in the game. And one of the kind of like most important pre-fight champions in the game at the moment is Odin. And Odin has the ability to gain, to give three pre-fights to any champion. And then uh, each pre-fight puts a corresponding buff on your champion. And these buffs basically give you aptitude buff, increasing potency of fury, armor, and precision. Then you gain a protection buff. Uh, limiting the max amount of damage you might be taking per single hit and also gives you shock resistance all that is fine and good and all of that has its own set of values utilities for instance the shock resistance might help you either against uh, emp modification or hazard shift shock and bleed or any champion that would place shocks on you and obviously protection buff just makes it a bit safer Aptitude buffs lets you do slightly more damage if your champion relies on Furies or Precision buffs. But there is an entirely different way how Odin can be extremely helpful. There's an entirely different way how the mere existence of the additional buffs already provide you an advantage. And that is when Odin's buffs interact with champion abilities. And I'm sure that you already kind of subconsciously know exactly what I'm talking about, at the very least the most popular examples. In case of Angela, for instance, right? For each buff on Angela, her opponent uh, suffers the following, following nullify and auto block ability accuracy reduction and damaging debuff de reduction. If you start the fight with three buffs plus whatever else Angela has, then you get much better effect with less amount of buffs. And if Angela is high sig, then you basically spend the entire fight from the worst, very first moment uh, completely being nullify immune, completely being immune to auto block, and also completely reducing the duration of all damaging debuffs. Angela has another ability where it comes in handy, where Angela's attack rating is increased by 1700 for each buff active uh, on her during attack. That also can make your special threes more powerful. So we knew about Angela and Angela's interactions of her own abilities with the fact that Odin places active buffs. But there are a lot more. There are quite a few more. Some of them are really significant. Some of them maybe not so much, but still well worth to be aware of. So we're going to be going over the champions in the game that interact with Odin's buffs. I will be showcasing some gameplay examples as well to show you the difference exactly on a couple of them at the end of the video. But the next one is uh, obviously Green Goblin. Green Goblin arguably benefits the most. There is honestly a very huge difference of how powerful this champion is, whether you have Odin's pre-fight abilities or not. And the reason for it is uh, due to a couple of things. First thing is that whenever you activate Carnage Bomb, and that is a lot, that is your heavy attacks and your special two. All buffs inflict incinerate deal basically for each buff you get to inflict incinerate dealing 5400 energy damage over 15 seconds. Incinerate also prevents special block, blah blah blah. These Odin pre fight abilities basically give you three incinerates automatically, regardless of what buffs you have active. On top of that, with the level one, you also get 100% potency increase of your burst damage dealt per unique. Uh, debuff but because you inflict these debuffs with your carnage bombs your opponent will have more debuffs and your burst is going to be significantly stronger so red goblin is actually a completely different champion it's kind of like one is red goblin and imagine if red goblin got buffed <laughs> and uh, yes red goblin i will show the difference as well in the video a bit i'm not gonna be the best red goblin player but i'm gonna showcase that silver surfer also benefits from any buff on his kit in a form that you deal extra burst damage, 403 extra damage on each hit per unique buff. 
So typically Silver Surfer has like three, four unique buffs, but this lets you start the fight with three unique buffs. That means that every single hit you land on opponent will have extra 1200 damage in this scenario because you're going to have three extra buffs. It doesn't specify that it has to be Silver Surfer buffs, it can be any buffs. And in this situation, you get every single hit you do is going to hit 1200 more damage, which is, you know, fairly big difference as well. Keeping on, Heimdall. Heimdall is another champion that benefits from any buff on him by his signature ability. I understand that Heimdall is in a desperate need of help, but I did not want to leave him out here. And in the case of Heimdall, at end of each fight, you uh, basically count how many buffs you have. That is the Heimdall's persistent ability if he's awakened. And then at the beginning of next fight, you gain a power gain buff. And basically at a max sig level, three buffs from Odin alone equate for 27% of max power, which is nearly a bar of power. So it means that Odin's pre-fight ability would grant you an extra bar of power at the beginning of the fight, pretty much everywhere. Let's hope that Heimdall gets buffed, and this could be a very interesting way to benefit from that ability. In case of Icarus, it's fairly straightforward. There, the main thing is his level 3. Each uh, true damage attack... Da, 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 here you go. True damage attack that applies a bonus of 1000 attack rating per unique buff currently on Icarus. Again, giving three, him 3 unique buffs on top of whatever he has himself. You give him basically 3300 uh, extra attack rating during special 3. So that is helpful to Icarus. Very similar case to Venom as well. Venom is a champion that uh, grants 5% damage during the attack for each buff Venom has. So again, not the biggest deal, but interesting to keep in mind. And obviously the aptitude works well with Venom as such also. And uh, with Venom pool, again, it's not the biggest benefit, but uh, important thing to know that uh, on your heavy attacks, you gain your wishes buff that increases your potency of damage over time effects. Uh, this lasts for 5 seconds per unique buff. So, if you have the 3 buffs, you basically gain extra 15 second duration of this wishes buff, which again, can be useful at times, because it is quite significant difference of your damage over time effects. And as you notice, the vast majority of these champions have been cosmic, but there are 2 tech champions that also can benefit just from the fact that you're having a buff active. Number one, it is Ghost, which is the main reason why Odin's synergies, kind of got Odin's pre-fight abilities, got nerfed prior to release in the game. Uh, previously, you could stack them, and you could be in a situation where you can get like nine of these stacked up, and uh, with that, you would obviously get a significant attack rating, because if you have Ghost and Ant-Man on the same team, then you get 15% attack rating for each debuff, uh, sorry, for each buff on Ghost, if you have three buffs active from Odin, it automatically grants you 45% attack rating. So that's effectively the difference of running and not running Liquid Courage double edge, almost. But it is quite important. And, uh, you know, with Antman being more exciting character, I guess, could come in play. So that was the original reason why Odin's pre-fight abilities actually got changed to a point where we can't stack them anymore. So you can buff your ghost up, as well and lastly quite interestingly again a champion that desperately does need some help from kabam it's red skull and on the red skull the main thing is on his level two where his level two increases the shock duration for each buff active on red skull and uh, again so you can get 150 percent increase of your shock just by having odin's prefights active so again might not be super important now, but if Red Skull ever gets a crazy good synergy or gets buffed at any point in future, it could potentially be extremely helpful. Right, so I'm going to show a couple of actual in-fight examples to compare the difference. So here we're going to go with Silver Surfer, and this is without pre-fight abilities. We see that I have just the Power Cosmic buff active, and you deal 7... And at this, this point of connection, I had 2 buffs, so I deal 7... 105 energy damage per hit with one buff it's 353 with my rank 3 6 stack so you can see that i only deal 353 energy damage then i'm gonna amp him up 
I do make some mistakes. It's not super important. I amp him up. At this point, I already have a bunch of buffs active. I deal 1400. So we can see that at right now I have four unique buffs. And I deal 1400 damage per hit already when I'm fully ramped, pretty much. And then I can finish on the fight. If I do activate Odin's pre fights on Silver Surfer, you can see that from the very first hit in the fight, I already did deal 1400 damage. That's from the very first hit. That used to be 300. That's over then more than 1000 extra damage per every hit. We can see that in many cases, it is actually more then my basic attacks can be dealing with Silver Surfer. So there is definitely a very noticeable difference there. All that extra energy damage adds up, obviously, once I'm going to be fully ramped. So I did make a mistake somewhere there. Once I'm pretty much fully ramped, here I hit in a block. I deal 2,400 extra damage, which is quite significant difference, which is basically double more than I was doing before on every single hit. So that is the benefit on Silver Surfer, even though obviously the actual effects had very little to do. And here we have Red Goblin. <laughs> I'm going to show a comparison now. So I drop a heavy attack, nothing happens. Why? Because I have no buffs active. So I'm going to use a level 1 at some point. We can see that they're taking 300 something energy damage, but 900 at the end. And, you know, there's incinerate one measly little incinerate, then a heavy attack, and we have armor break, nothing special. And I get to about 72 hits at this point in the fight, and uh, he's still at 60% health. I like 70, 80 hits. So I'm going to quit out somewhere here. So I have 85 hits in the fight, and he's still over halfway alive. And uh, I'm going to quickly re-enter the fight. And you can see that from the very first heavy attack, you immediately can inflict three incinerates on the Winter Soldier, dealing, you know, decent amount of damage, given the fact that this is a six-star rank one. And then when you activate your first level one, obviously you deal more damage with that. You can immediately build up to your level two. And your first level two immediately is going to start putting up plenty of incinerates, several armor breaks, hit a lot harder and inflict a lot of damage or time effects. And that is immediately, this is unramped, rank one, six star red goblin. And again, I'm not using the perfect rotations or anything like that. I'm not red goblin expert, but red goblin has been transformed from a fairly mediocre character to a champion that can deal an absolute truckload of damage very early on. Again, keep in mind, this is six star rank one, no other synergies apart from Odin's pre-fights are active. And you can already see that Winter Soldier pretty much melt. So I think 87 hit was where we were before. At this point, he's at 44% health. And obviously, as we are closing into the end, the end is nigh. I think at 123 hits, we're going to be able to finish off that fight. So yes, there is a very, very, very big difference in how much damage Red Goblin is capable of putting out with or without those pre-fights. Again, some champions that I mentioned benefit more some champions benefit less from these abilities again i think it's fairly safe to say that angela is one of the main targets red goblin would be second one i think silver surfer is a very solid target for odin's pre fights for those purposes and then again the rest of them is just very good to be aware of in case of ghost especially so those are kind of the secrets of odin's pre fight abilities Obviously, that is not to say that you shouldn't or couldn't use Odin's pre-fight abilities for their intended purpose to buff Fury buffs and stuff like that on different champions. I just wanted to emphasize the fact that there are champions whose abilities interact with Odin's pre-fight abilities, even if you do not actually benefit from any of the effects that Odin's pre-fight abilities do. You can benefit just from the fact that they are active buffs on you as a champion. Hope you learned something in this video. Hope you get. I hope I kept you guys entertained, and uh, I'm gonna catch you guys soon. See ya. Hello there, guys, and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about.